We're in our panel mode and we're going to use needle three. So I have that marked here. I have a Sharpie right here and we're gonna do the panel all the way around and we're gonna stop where I have it marked here. This is needle 42. So we're doing 40 needles. So we're trying to make it the same circumference as our smaller machine. You can get the sm smaller machine, but this is for those who um, don't wanna buy the uh, 30, for the 40 needle circuit machine or they only have this one, the 48. So we're gonna be making a baby uh, beanie hat, but on the 40 needle circular knitting machine. So to start your cast on, we wanna start at our third needle and we wanna leave a little bit of extra yarn. That's probably a little bit too much, but I like to leave a little bit extra just in case. Um, so we start at our third needle and now, and I start underneath so it hooks under the hook of the needle. Get on our needle and then that's under and then we want over, under and over each needle till we get to the 42nd needle. And we're to our 42nd needle, that's where we're gonna stop. So we've done from our third needle all the way around to our 42nd needle. So now we're going to put it in our yarn holder and you wanna make sure it's completely seated down in front and it's gonna go all the way down. And then I'm gonna put this guy in the middle hole of my yarn tensioner. And so now we're going to start our first row by cranking for, uh, backwards. And so this is gonna be row one. And we wanna make sure it catches and goes around the peg. That's our first row from our cast on. Now we're back at our third needle for our panel. So I'm just gonna mark that we've done run one row on our counter. And then to now go back to make our second row, this is our number three needle that we started on that's marked with a Sharpie here. We want to go over this peg to the to my right. And I have this peg marked here for me so I can see it as a visual. We want it to go over once. And now we're gonna start going back and it has to go over this peg again. And so this is where panels can get a little bit confusing. And so you wanna make sure it flips all the way down and around. Now we're doing our second row. You'll also see when we start to do panels, it gets caught on this. We're ending at our 42nd needle and our third needle. The yarn kind of gets caught right there. So that's what's nice to have your loom pick. You kind of just need to help out the yarn a little bit until we get more fabric made on the machine. So push it down. And now we're at our 42nd needle. We're going to stop at the peg to the left of it. It has to flip over that peg because that's our stopping point. We don't wanna do any of these other needles. And now we're gonna go back and it has to flip over this peg again. And then it's gonna catch on this needle as well. Now we're starting our third row. Make a project, just practice, and that helps. Again, you'll see how it gets stuck here. We just want to help it out. It's going around the peg, we stop, and then it's gonna go around the peg again. That's our third. And now you want to continue making your rows. You're going to do a total of 60, and that does not include your cast on. And you can pause the video here until you get to 60 rows. So we're gonna put our tail end of our yarn on our needle to cast off. And you wanna make sure it's a long piece of yarn about the circumference of your machine or of your project. So now we're going to cast off. And so since it's coming this way, I've taken the yarn out of the yarn holder. We're just gonna let it pass by the yarn holder without any yarn. And now since it's down here, we're just going to pick up each stitch with our needle. So it just depends on which side of the panel you stop on, whether you're gonna cast off on this side or you're gonna cast off on this side, since you go back and forth. And then I pick it up one stitch at a time. If I do too many, it seems like it's easier to get it to uh, come off the needles that's not secured on and then you drop a stitch 
and you have to fix it and that's not fun. And I'll do a quick fast forward here. You can pause the video until your project is casted off. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cinch down one side because we're gonna use this yarn to then stitch up the side to make the tube. So we're gonna cinch it down and we're going to put right sides or knit sides together to make this our inside, the purl side be our inside for this one. So now that he's cinched down, I tried this a few different ways and I'll show you my practice projects and you can decide how you would like to close your tube. But here's when I tried to do a mattress stitch close and you're doing it on the side where it flipped over those pegs twice. So you kind of have this weird little end, right? And so when I tried to do a mattress stitch picking these up, it just didn't close it nice enough for me. It showed this line. I also tried doing a crochet close. I did like a slip stitch which worked really well. It w looks pretty good, I think, except for the fact it's bulky. That's how I'm going to show you is this way with the needle sewing it back and forth, the two ends to make our tube. So far, this is the nicest look I have found. So you can see this, each stitch back and forth to make our tube. And I pick it up right there. And it's kind of that end piece that goes back and forth over the peg at the start and stop. I'm gonna put the needle through both of those sides. And this has created for me what I think is the nicest looking seam so far. The mattress stitch, I didn't like when I, where I had to pick it up. It made it kind of look a little goofy. And when I did, I tried to do a single crochet. I did a slip stitch crochet and that made it too bulky for me, especially for a baby hat. And so I'm just picking up right underneath those outer stitches, right underneath both of them and I'm just going to stitch it all the way down. And I'll show you after I do a few how it looks on the right side, because we're trying to make it look as seamless as possible. Do this all the way down. So if I flip it over, I think I've done enough. I don't think that, what do you guys think? Especially with variegated yarn, I think it hides your um, seams. Together. And we're just going to close it and I'm going to put a little bit of a knot here to secure him. Okay. Now we take our one end. We have the side we already cinched up. This will be our inside layer. So we have our inside layer. Now we have our outside layer. That's what makes our double layer beanie hat. And then now we just have to cinch up the outside. So we're going to just cinch him up like so. So now that we have both sides cinched up together and it's made a double layer beanie hat, I like to knot the two tail ends together like this. So my grandma said to take the tails ends of the working yarn and I'm just making sure that inside layer is kind of up in there and she said just sew back and forth a few times at the top. Oops. And we're gonna do the same thing on the inside. Up in there so I can kind of fill, and if I can, I try to get both layers. Now I did put both ends, and so just for action, added security, I like to knot them down again. So I knotted it down on the front, sewed it down a few times, put them through to the inside, do a little knot again. We can take our tail ends and we can just put them in between the two layers of the beanie hat without any extra that we might have. Now I'm just going to kind of pull it tight, cut off the extra, and they kind of just hide in between the hat. And there's our beanie hat. So infant head circumference is between 14 and 16 inches. Uh, this baby doll that I got off of Amazon is 14 and a half. And then the hat ended up being 62 rows because I was talking and lost track. But the 60 rows I like, 66, it will cover their eyes and then you have to flip up a brim. And so here's how you can make a beanie hat on the 48 needle circular knitting machine.